Full Service Radio is supported by Compass, the future of real estate in the metro D.C. area and beyond. Discover more at compass.com. Tune in to Full Service Radio. Full Service Radio. Full Service. Full Service. Full Service. Full Service Radio. Hey there, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Um, I'm Melissa, and you're tuning in to the Edible Activist Podcast. I am the creator of Food Talks DC, a platform that intentionally creates space for people of color to share food narratives that stem from the land. I travel the DC area and beyond to document personal food journeys, anecdotes, and personal perspectives from everyday people, residents, growers, and activists on topics related to health, tradition, environment, sustainability, food justice, and culture. This podcast will highlight black and brown edible activists in the food and farming space. And no, not that kind of edible you're probably thinking about. (laughs) We're talking about food people, food activism. I choose to define an edible activist as anyone who is feeding their community, environment, and family through healthy food. Every week, I will bring in a special guest to hear their personal food journey firsthand and learn how they are channeling edible activism in the D.C. area. We don't promote people, we tell stories, and we empower communities. Today on the show, I am really, really, really excited to have Kevin Alsop, who is the founder and visionary of Feeding 5000, which is based in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And for those who aren't too familiar with um, the greater D.C., Capitol Heights is a suburb that sits right out of, outside of the city. Um, the mission of Feeding 5000 is to feed 5,000 families annually within the next five years. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're absolutely no. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> I got that right. Did I did I spit that out right? <laughs> um, yeah. That's that's just you know that's part of uh, that's an important part, but that is part of our mission. Yes. Well, for this, sure, is for sure, this is great. This is great. Um, so Kevin and I met almost about a year ago um, through a mutual connect who happens to be a grower. Shout yes. out to Jennifer Lumpkin who Big moved back to out. Cleveland doing her thing out there in the growing scene. And I was just amazed to be in his presence and just always truly humbled when I meet someone else coming who is in this space doing really great work. And when I was putting, you know, thinking about my strategy for this entire podcast and who I wanted to invite and, you know, just everything being a true reflection of this entire edible activist movement, Mm -hmm. I said, Kevin, cool. Everybody out here is doing really great things, awesome. but like your your vibe and the way that we connected at your garden, mm-hmm. just really dope things. But as I said before, you know, Food Talks DC is about telling stories, and so I want the audience to <laughs> learn about Kevin. Um, Kevin's from Philly, 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 Philly in the house, <laughs> born and bred. North Philly, Southwest, big shouts out to all my family out there in Absolutely. Philly. Absolutely. Sure, the sure. city of love, right? Brother. Brotherly, brotherly love. love. Uh, the city of brotherly, brotherly love. Brotherly love. I like Philly. And sisterly love, I too. A, and sure. shout out to, to Temple. I didn't go to Temple, but my best friends went to Temple. That's so I'm up. definitely yeah, familiar with Philly. Temple. So um, what was Philly like growing up? I'm uh-huh. sure it wasn't always love growing up. You know, no. I'm, I'm, what, 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 what was Philly like? What were those Philly streets look, looking like for you? And what did, um. how did food shape that? You know, <laughs> we're on this journey. Walk us through. Walk us through. I know. Well, um, I'm going to go into that, but I just want to first thank you for allowing me to be here. It's an honor to be here Aww. and and to rock with an uh, edible activist yourself. <laughs> thank can, you. I can, we can get more into that later. But um, growing up in Philly, I was born and bred in Philly. Um, spent the first 25 years of my life in Philly, North Philly, Southwest Philly. Um, <clears throat> I grew up on, uh, I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up on <laughs> cheese steaks, cheese fries, <laughs> pizza. You know, not, not South Street? Yeah, we, we, rock, we rock South Street. We rock South Street. <laughs> That's um, what I think about when I think of, you know, cheese steaks. No, you know. see, see. But I know, I know. I didn't go, go there the with Okay, that. I know. Okay. I'm, I'm about to get, I, you I know. think we had that conversation. <laughs> we did. The best joints is in the hood. <laughs> yeah. All that other stuff is hype and glamour. But um, but um, for sure, um, I mean, my mom did cook, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But I grew up on a block 
which was um, definitely community oriented. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up on Jerome Street. Big shouts out to Jerome Street um, in my younger years on that block where we had block captains, you know, we had uh, families, we spent the night over this house, that house, we even had the neighbor, the block snitch, you know what I'm saying, that if you did something, she uh -oh. going to tell your mama, uh -oh. you know what I mean, but at the same time, she'll snitch on you, but then she'll be sending you to the store 10 minutes later, you know what I mean, to make up, make up, you know what I mean, get so, my groceries, you know, boy. <laughs> we, with the block parties, we shut the block down, ran through the sprinkler, so I, love I, it. I grew up in I that, love it. In Thank that, you for painting in that, that. dynamic, you know what I mean, and and you, we see, you know, how things is today. It's really not like that as much. But I grew up on that. And, you know, we was on this block. And you couldn't come on this block and act any old kind of way and be an outsider because you will get met. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Not just not from the young bucks, but from the pops and the moms. Because it was some pops and some moms mm -hmm. on the block. It was family on the block. So I guess that's not I guess. I know that's in me from, from day one. That's a day one um uh, blessing that I that I that I've experienced. So you know, as I got older and got more into the streets and the gangs and all that old um, crazy stuff of my own choosing, because my mother did the best she could to raise me up, raise me right. Shout out to my mother shout Olivia. Shout out to mom. You know what I mean. Shout out to my mom too, who yes. I think is listening right now. Yes, shout out to your mom too. Hey, I, Melinda. I'm hoping my mom listening, <laughs> but she told me she was going to the hairdresser. <laughs> it's so, okay. We'll so have it it's up all, for her later. It's all it's all good. You know. So I. I grew up in that dynamic. Didn't know nothing about no farming, no growing. You know, I grew up in like a like I say, cheesesteaks and all that type of stuff. So, um, but I, you know, as I got older, you know, my era is that era where they dropped the dope and the crack into the neighborhoods and stuff like right, that. So, right. you know, as I got older, things got real sketchy. You know what I'm saying? With myself personally, you know, with the gangs and, um, you know, I started out hustling and then. Uh, you know, went from hustling to using, uh, being homeless, all kinds of, you know, crazy stuff. And, uh, you know, I thank God that God preserved me through all that. And, and I'm I'm here today. So, yeah, Absolutely. that's, you know, growing up in Philly was an experience. I love Philly. I'm not moving back to Philly, but <laughs> I do love Philly. I love you, Philly, but I ain't coming back to Philly. That's just real talk. I'm not doing that. I understand. You know? so I, 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 I understand. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what... So what were those food experiences like in Philly? I know there were no there was no farm, there was no growing, mm -hmm. you know, we you and I were rapping before we started mm -hmm. and your friends are like you're a grower? Right. You're a yeah. farmer? Like what in the world does that mean? You're from North Philly. Right. You right, know? Right. So there was none of that. No mom cooked, you were yeah. around the chili you know, the Philly cheesesteaks yeah, and yeah, yeah. but was there even an introduction to food health no not not None not really no because i mean that that error was i think that error i look back now that error was really about poisoning us mm. in so many different ways not just the drugs but i remember you know like the first um fast food restaurant that i was exposed to at the time was called gino's and we used to go get gino giants and i think that transitioned to some mcdonald's or something like that but that's what we grew up in, you know, and everybody, you know, you went to the supermarket, you bought your groceries. So, like, you know, even if you, like, had health in school, it didn't deal with diet and nutrition and all that time. So I, I believe, you know, that era was a real, really, um, I look back now, was a, a design era to poison the masses, you know, in so many different ways. Not just with the drugs, but definitely with the, with the health and the food, you know what I'm saying? So... You know, you get conditioned that it don't taste good unless it's got white flour on it and you drop it in some grease and you drop a ton of salt on it. And so you get conditioned to taste. You know, we're Absolute, conditioned yes. to taste. What tastes, you know what I mean? Yep. As, as opposed to what's good for our body, what feeds us, you know, it's the herbs and the vegetables. and You know what I'm saying? So I, I wasn't exposed to none of that. And none of that, yeah. Okay, so you left Philly. Mm hmm You came to Baltimore. No, no, I went to North Carolina first. You went to North Carolina. <laughs> then okay. I went back to I Philly. Said, okay. Then I came to, to Oh, Berlin. my yeah. gosh. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, went to yeah. North Carolina. Yeah. yeah and yeah. then you went back to Philly. Yeah. In those tra with, within those transitions, what... When did you start growing food? <laughs> when did you fall in love with food? Um, I fell in love with food. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna keep it real. Um, I, I'm gonna say. I know there were some health issues. Right. That you were I, I changed. I'm gonna say maybe about 
five or six years ago. Mm. Yeah, you know, um, you know, we get conditioned in our mindset and through our diet, you know, we go to the doctors and, you know, we got the high blood pressure and the high cholesterol and the, the diabetes and, you know, we're conditioned that that's who we, that's, we should have those things. And, you know, the doctor asks you, hey, your mama, your daddy had this, your mama, oh, well, it's hereditary. And they write it off and they want to give you a prescription. Right. Yeah, it's hereditary because your mama ate bad. She taught you how to eat bad. Your <laughs> grandma did. Ate, ate, ate grandma. Bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And honestly, the food that our ancestors, our great ancestors ate, was a lot more healthy. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So they got a lot more fresher food, you know. Now, you know, everything was not poison. It wasn't poison as much now, you know, with the additives, the preservative, the herb the um the, her- the pesticides and, mm-hmm. uh, and herbicides that are that they spray on the food. So they actually were eating better, but then the, the, the influx of the fast foods and the, and all that and you know, the thing is to eat out, don't nobody cook no more at the crib, you know what I'm saying? So um I say about six years ago, I went to my doctor and my blood pressure was high. My cholesterol level was high. I'm pre-diabetic and I ain't taking no medicine. Ooh. I'm not taking no medicine. You, you know, shut it down. I'm not, said you no. know, because one, I mean, all right. So you take the medicine and then you got 92,000 side effects that come. So I'd rather have that didn't have the other 20,000 things that I might get, you know. And this was all stemming from the cheesesteaks, uh, just, just eating like, bad, just eating yeah. bad, eating mm-hmm. bad, you know. And as we get older, you know, before I moved to North Carolina, I was like a buck 60, you know, fit wow. buck 60. I went to North Carolina and started going in, I was 225, <laughs> you know what I mean. I remember <laughs> I went back to Philly, and my old, old girlfriend was like. Man, you got fat. You Yo, know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. You know, what a way to be direct. You know man. what I'm saying? But she kept it real. And, and, and me, you know, being the lover that I am, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? I felt some kind of way. You Kevin know I mean? is also a comedian, guys. Just oh. it is in case you were wondering, grower, uh, comedian, you know activist, you hey, name it. Hey, I did karaoke the other night too. I'm just trying to tell you. Ooh, a sight to see. I killed it. Though. Invite I me next front. time because I, I need I to see front, this. You know? <laughs> me and Leader are gonna come. Uh-huh. But real talk, no. Um, so you know, she was, you know, great doctor. She was cool, you know. She, but she, you know, she got the prescription pad out and was like. You know, here, uh, you know, take this and this and that. I'm like, I'm not taking that. And it's not just for the side effects. I know I'm not disciplined to be taking no pills every day. I'm right. not going to do it. Right. I, you don't want to carry around your Sunday, I, I, Monday, oh Tuesday, God, Wednesday that, pack and have to flip it open. Yeah. I, I and despise some people have to those do it. things. Yeah, some, some people, people have to do it, it but I'm not doing that. Yeah. I knew I wasn't going to do that. So I told her, I said, look, all I got to do is get back in the gym and change my diet. And she was like, what else you can say? I'm not going to take the medicine. And I did just that. I got back into the gym, you know. And, you know, I like to do that kickboxing thing, you know, just in case anybody is feel... sleeping on me. I, I like to kickbox. I'm just trying to Ooh, tell you. I love kickboxing. Anybody. But go ahead. At that point, did you ever feel like when you're having these conversations with the doctor? Because mm-hmm. I know for me personally, when I go see my doctor, mm-hmm. I'm like, I know my body. You can't tell me about my body. Right. I right. know why I'm feeling a certain way. Mm-hmm. I'm here pretty much. I just feel like I need to show up. But right. and I end up saying this is what's wrong with me. And this is why. Exactly. Even at that point, before the whole introduction to the world, world of food health, mm-hmm. did you feel that way? Oh, yeah. That's why I told her. And that's her. why you told her. Yeah, like, I, said, I, I, know, I know I need to get in the gym and change my diet. It, it's not really rocket science, you know. And what was that? What was her response? Did, there was there any pushback, or was there, you know, it, no, you need to take these, you know? Oh, uh, come on, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa I know. Well, what, I know what you. <laughs> I know how you handled it. <laughs> you know let's be saying? clear. You know, I mean, it may have been, but I don't know. I, I don't listen to that type stuff because you can't make me do nothing. So. I mean, but no, this was, she was cool. She was cool. She was like, what's she going to say? Okay. You know what I mean? You, I mean, you, so. Well, I do. Yeah. Let's, let, me, let me read this real quick because for those who, mm-hmm. um, Kevin actually shared a bit of his story on my platform. And I just wanted to read it okay. really quickly as we're talking about all of this because he, he was facing health, health challenges. Like he said, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and he wasn't taking anything. Nothing. 
He said, I did not want to take drugs to control these problems. So I looked for more healthy alternatives like changing my diet and exercising, which he said. I began purchasing wheatgrass. Right. His brother started off with wheatgrass, y'all. <laughs> Wheat, wheatgrass shots at, shots at a local juice shop near my job in an attempt to be healthy. And then I bought a kit online mm-hmm. and became amazed at how quickly it grew and was immediately um, hooked on growing wheatgrass and veggies. That's real talk. That's exactly how it went down. And the heavens just opened up oh, and was like, <laughs> went to Catholic school, so I know the hymns. Don't sleep on the hymns. I, actually, I don't know the hymns. But, but isn't I'm it crazy saying. how something so simple and so, so life giving just yep. just opens up this whole world right. and like you're here. Right. Like, it's crazy. That's so crazy. And that's how it is. But that's the whole dynamic of a seed. That's the preach. whole thing with the whole the, if, the grain of a. Of a, of a mustard, a mustard seed, seed. that Absolutely. small seed you know what i'm saying and that's how it happens you know what i mean we can take one pepper a pepper seed i don't even know I, the size of a pepper seed and now you got enough peppers you know what i mean on this plant to distribute you know what i'm saying and that's the whole dynamic you know because i needed to take control of my health you know i began to plant and so from that, it, it opened up a world for me. And now I, I, my thing is to empower and share that with everybody. And it's, it's a lot of us edible activists, um, and we do things in our own different way. And, you know what I'm saying? And that's what it's about. And it's, it's about our journey. But that wheatgrass set it off. And you know what? I have not grown wheatgrass ever since. The crazy thing about <laughs> really? it. Really? I'll be like, I, I need to grow some more wheatgrass. But it worked. It knocked I weight off me. And... You know, I mean, so it worked, but it it catapulted me to like, oh, maybe I can do some tomatoes and some peppers. And that first season of tomato, I might have had about three tomatoes and two peppers and a cucumber. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I kept at it. But it also made me get even more into health and studying my body and and just health health overall. It's this 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 journey is it's an amazing journey. It is. It's an amazing journey. It is. Okay, so for those who are just tuning in, this is Melissa Food Talks DC mm-hmm. here at the Edible Activist Podcast, broadcasting live at the Line Hotel. I am here with Kevin Alsup, who is the founder and visionary of Feeding 5000, and we are learning about his journey, learning about his whole wheatgrass revelation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sleep on the wheatgrass. And just really having a, a good time and just Always. talking up all good things for food and all great vibes so we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in just a few moments guys welcome back the edible Act- edible activist podcast melissa here food talks dc here with kevin Alsop of feeding 5000 been rapping about his journey he hails from north philly we talked about a little bit of the health challenges that he faced growing up and how wheatgrass was kind of like life-changing although he doesn't grow wheatgrass anymore <laughs> Turned your back on wheatgrass. You know what I mean? Just, Look at you. Just, I'm gonna grow, you know what? I'm going to grow me some wheatgrass. But you grass. know what? Look he that. grows. So we went to um, Lita and I. So you guys, Lita is a, a photographer, a friend, um, awesome person. She's here with us. So hey, I have to shout out Lita. Hey. We visited Kevin almost a week ago. Because actually, Kevin is working on an amazing project that we're going to talk about a little bit later. But he's just growing every great thing. And we walked away with abundance. You still owe me some pickles, See, how? some sunflower seeds. <laughs> oh, I want those sunflower <laughs> seeds. Can we still get those sunflower seeds? But anyway, um, what he's doing over at Feeding 5000 in his garden, Capitol Heights, is amazing from his apprenticeship um, and just his whole perspective of, of how... Everyone should be growing food on on their own. 
you know, For like sure. it's to survive. We have to, you know, we really had some great conversations around that. But let's talk about feeding 5,000. What, how did, like, what, what made you um, start this whole initiative? Feeding 5,000, how are we going to do that? Feeding 5,000, okay. So that comes from, it was birth for me actually wanting to go volunteer at another uh, location, uh, Mission of Love in um, Capitol Heights, Maryland, just to go volunteer. And as a grower, I see uh, empty space and I'll be like, you know we can grow some food right there. So that coupled with the fact that the closest grocery store at the time had just shut down. I mean, it just shut down, closed the doors, we out. So that catapulted that area to be a food desert. And so um, I was kind of talk coaxed into doing a nonprofit, um, which I wasn't going to do because there's so much work involved. Yes, there is. Um, but um, Feeding 5,000 comes in my spirit from when Christ fed the 5,000. And the story pretty much goes that, you know, Christ was, he was going to a, a certain place and the, the multitude followed him because they wanted to hear what he had to say. Mm-hmm. And um, they were hungry and the disciples wanted to send them into the town for them to get food and pretty much wanted to go, hey, send them so they can go to the grocery store so they can get food. And Christ was like, nah, we're going to feed them right where they at. Let's mm-hmm. feed them here. What we got. So we had the five loaves and the two fishes, right, you know right. what I'm saying? So he broke it. He, he blessed it, and he broke it and disseminated it. And the Bible says that he fed 5,000 men, including women and children. So it actually was more than 5,000. So when I see the number 5,000, and remember that the number 5,000 to us is really symbolic. When I see the number 5,000, I actually see 20,000 because I look at a family of four. So I, we actually see okay. 20,000. But okay. always remember, the number is just symbolic. It's just a symbolic number to us that we use. So they disseminated the food. Everybody ate. Clearly, everybody was filled. Everybody was filled. And then afterwards, the disciples took up 12 baskets full of what was left over. So the concept is that, you know, we take what we have. The smallest of what we have, we come together, we utilize what we have, you know, whether it's growing or whatever, we utilize what we have. And because we came together and we use what we have, there's abundance that must take place. Powerful. There has to be an abundance. It's not just the coming and the eating and the filling, but the abundance must come and take place. It has to take place. So... That concept was given to me. And so when I'm thinking, like we give away food, as you can clearly see, (laughs) we give it. We don't sell to the people we serve. I don't do farmer's market. I'm not knocking who does it. That's your hustle. That's what you do. Absolutely. That's not what I was told to do. Absolutely. I was told to give the food away. Wow. And that's what I'm going to be obedient to. And it has not failed me. (laughs) It has not. That concept has not failed us. Wow. You know, so but we do. We sell commercially. We sell we sell commercially, but to the people we serve. But see, the thing about it is our motto is whoever controls your food source controls you. Absolutely. I don't want to be in control of you. Do not keep coming back to me for your food because you're going to get disappointed at one point in time. That's not what I want. I need you to, to take you and to grab a neighbor and you guys begin to produce your own food because this is about empowering people. Not owning people. I don't want to own nobody. I say I own. I do. I do claim ownership on my two daughters. <laughs> they do belong to me. They're mine. And that's it. I don't care who don't agree. It don't matter. Those two young ladies belong to me. They come Absolutely. from my loins. Yes. They belong to me. But I don't want to own people. We need to empower people. People need to grow foods. Remember that block that I grew up? I can imagine if that block, if we decided, hey, let's grow some food in this vacant space we got. That's enough to feed the whole block. And what you do, you begin to subsidize your own, you know, one way to add money to your income is to cut your bottom line. Do you know how much money you would save? Especially think about how much money you spend on fresh produce that you think is fresh, but they ain't really fresh. 
That's a whole nother conversation. Thank you. you better preach. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and it, I'm serious. If people sit down and do the math, they'd be like, yo, man, I spend about five, six hundred dollars uh, on fruits and vegetables alone in a month. And I'm not saying take that money and go out and buy your Mercedes because you can't eat that either. Can't take you can't eat it. You know? and, and you can't take it with you. And when you, you cannot die. take it with you. <laughs> And I re- I'm reminded of when they had those floods in Baltimore and I seen one guy, he was videotaping, standing on his balcony. All them beautiful cars was floating down the river, floating down that river that just popped up because of the floods. And I'm saying to myself, well, I hope they got some food in there. I hope they got some food in there. So, you know, so it's about empowering people and, and changing some mindsets because it's so easy for, for easy for us to... You know, we condition, yeah, we go to the grocery store or whatever, whatever, and we, and we do the restaurants because it's convenient, and we right. caught up in a rat race, we work all day, we, we give all our time to whoever we give our time to, we only got a little bit of time for ourselves, and then now we're going to sit down and put some poison in our body and put some poison in our mind because most, most of us sit down there while we feeding that poison in our body, feeding our mind with some foolishness that's on tv i'm not the tv police or the food police i'm just saying but that's real talk i'm that's just saying talk. so that's what feeding five thousand so we're not just trying to feed you physically but we must feed you spiritually and mentally because it's all one and the same it's hard to be physically sick and not be spiritually sick or mentally sick mm. it's very difficult and like i said before this has been designed specifically for for black and brown people to destroy us. Yes. That's real talk. That is real talk. The system is set up. It's set up. It's set up. And we come from, I guarantee you, most people under the sound of my voice, you not a, a generation or two past when your grandmama had a garden, your granddaddy, somebody in your family grew some food. I get those stories all the time. Of course. Oh, Absolutely. my grandmother, she had a garden in the back. My great-grandmother, my mother reminds me that my great-grandmother in North Carolina, oh, yeah, Granny had a big garden. So it's in my blood. It's in our blood. But, you know, we done, we done sold out to sickness. I'm just saying. Touche. I'm just Touché. saying. Touche. Touche. So for those just tuning in to the Edible Activist podcast, I'm sitting here with Kevin Alsop of Feeding 5,000. And um, when we were there over a week ago, um, we were actually interviewing you on this awesome project and collaboration that mm-hmm. you've been working on with Xavier Brown of Soyful. Oh. Shout out to Xavier. X. <laughs> X. Mm-hmm. Peace. <laughs> and um, you're growing these peppers. Right, right. And what Xavier is doing is he's creating this system of sustainability and vitality for black growers in the area. Cool. And um, you all, he's he's giving you guys these seeds. Mm-hmm. You're growing them. For, you're growing them for him. He's coming to get them. He's weighing them. He's paying paying you for them. Correct. Mm-hmm. And I just think it's an awesome collaboration, an awesome way to support you know the growers in this area, especially ones of color. Um, and it was interesting when I was talking to you. You made a, a statement and you said what Xavier what Xavier is doing is he's changing the currency Correct. with this whole you know process. And I just thought that was so dynamic. Can you speak a little bit more mm. to that? Well, I mean, at one time, I mean, food and commodities was the actual currency. You know what I mean? So now that we're caught up in the dollar and the plastic in systems that we have no control over whatsoever. Because um, if, we, if we get a printing press and start printing up our money, you know what's going to happen with that. We're we going to do Fed time. You know what I'm saying? Like, we killed somebody. That's real talk. And we don't control that plastic system. And I remember being a youngin' when they were, they, was, they were saying at one time that they had spoke about this time, but it was foreign to our mindsets and our concept. Where thing is being uh, done in plastic. Well, it's going to be a point where in the scriptures it says that no man, you're not, unless you have that mark of the beast, you're not going to be able to buy nor sell. So what you going to do? So the whole change in the currency concept is, okay, you get, you got one neighbor, they growing tomatoes and peppers. You got another neighbor, they might be growing cucumbers and zucchini. You got another neighbor growing lettuce. And, and so now we begin to barter amongst each other. Mm. Here, you Absolutely. take this, you take that, or services. 
you know, it's a young lady that I met who's a who's an organic chef, uh, chef. You know, she, you know, hey, give me some food. I prepare some food. You know, because we talked earlier, I do not cook. You know, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't. Cook. I'm too busy. So, so, so busy. Kevin hands me. I, I see him outside, <laughs> right, as I'm walking down Euclid, and um, I see him, uh, and he hands me a bag and says, "Here's some zucchini bread." And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this is so great! I'm so grateful." I said, "You cook?" He said, "No, I don't cook. I don't cook." <laughs> he was like, "I do not cook. I don't cook." His wife I, made it. Yeah, I can't wait. I don't cook. <laughs> I mean, I'm staying in my lane. You know what I'm saying? I grow. <laughs> I grow. Now, when I retire, then I'm going to get in the kitchen and do, you know, I can, but I just don't. I'm too busy. I understand. You know what I mean? I'm staying in my lane. I'm not, you know, I'm not being chauvinistic or nothing. My lane is not cooking at this particular time. And that's okay. You know? And there are actually a lot of other people whose lane isn't cooking, but they do it anyway. Right, right. probably shouldn't be doing it. That was horrible. But, right, you you just go beer all the way left, honey. (laughs) So, but I, but it's people that cook that don't grow. So it is what this it is. This is true. You know, if yeah. I can bring, bring the fresh produce and so forth and so on, and you cooking is what you do, we good to go. So um, that's, that's where I'm at. So with X and changing the currency. Okay, so that's really what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's taking control of the currency where we can begin to change goods and services, you know, for what we do. You know, you might do this. I might have some food. Like I say, you cook, I bring you some food, you cook the food, you share it with me. Sound like a plan to me. No, see, all money is, that's what money is. A money is an exchange of good. It's not paper. That dollar bill going to end up being what that dollar bill is at, at the end of the day, which is a piece of paper. And you notice, see, this is the trick. Every, every year since I've been old enough to know better, they always say that the dollar bill is devaluing, it's dropping, it's devaluing. Let me tell you something. As long as we got the United States military, that dollar bill going to always be okay. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? See, it's tricks. You know what I mean? And it's deception. And it's lies. And it's principalities. And it's powers. And it's spiritual wickedness in high places. And it's rulers of darkness of this world that we done bought into their system. But God has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And a lot of it is in that garden. Take us back to the land. Take us back to the land. Everything is in that garden that we need for healing. Now, on my journey, and I'm sorry to deviate from the currency thing, but on my journey, in this journey, I'm running into more healers. People that are saying, hey, you grow this food. This is what this will do. Because remember, my journey started out with me wanting to take control of my health. And it's going to always be there. I can feed 5,000, 20,000, 30,000 people. But if I'm sick, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. And I ain't going to be able to feed that many people if I'm sick. Absolutely. You know? You know, and that was, we were just talking about our friend Jennifer. Mm-hmm. And, and who is, was amazing. An, amazing. Amazing. Uh, community builder, amazing. connector. And, you know, the last time I saw her, mm-hmm. she she moved back to Cleveland because she needed to take care of family members. Mm-hmm. She said, I'm growing here, mm-hmm. you know, feeding, you know, people healthy food. But she said, if I'm not taking care of my own family, what, what's the point? And she packed up her stuff. She left. She's like, I got to take care of family. That's right. exactly. I got to feed my mom exactly. healthy food. Mm-hmm. She sent me a text the other day. She was just like, oh, my gosh, like my mom is moving around. Amen. And I just I, I just. Mm-hmm. It, it yeah. was just so emotional yeah. and it's she healing. it was early and then when she texted me mm-hmm. she's like oh my goodness just to see mm-hmm. the trans mm-hmm. you know the transformation already she hasn't even been there she's mm-hmm. only been there for a few months mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't believe it it's, you know it's healing it's healing i mean the the herbs is for the healing of the nation it's healing in what we put in into our body it's just that it's not really rocket science the problem is we've been so conditioned really conditioned and that's really one of the biggest challenges you know and if cuz we chase after taste we you know um but is a good it friend but of not even really good taste like well, we've it's, been it's, it's not we our, we've been conditioned that pack it with put some flour on top of it drop bad it in some sugar grease and bad add sugar oil and, and that's salt it real. up to the saltiness of saltivity is that a word <laughs> it is today you know what I mean? you know, it is today you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and put it in our mouth and 
drink some uh, high fructose corn syrup yep. to wash it all down. And yep. then we wonder why our ankles and our legs is the size of tree trunks. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Sad reality. You know? Sad but reality. guess what? You can't get those people to get off of that stuff. That's another drug. You know, that's, a, that's another form it of is. drug. How it you is. want to poison the masses is through the food. Absolutely. It's not rocket Food and water is not rocket science. And don't think that the powers that be are, ain't doing it. Look, they did experiments on us, remember? Many experiments. Exactly. To the point that I don't even, I feel like that's a form of trauma that, yeah. I mean, not to me personally, but right. when I even think about like my ancestors right. and those before and me those, who had to go through those experiences, it just boils me. And don't think, <laughs> and don't think they, not, they still not experiment. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, um, that's one of the biggest challenges is to get the people to change. But guess what? It, I'm, not, I'm not in a hurry. I'm going to be okay. Mm-hmm. I don't care how selfish you say. <laughs> I'm going to eat what I'm supposed to eat. And I'm not the food police. I like a piece of fried chicken too. Absolutely. I'm not going to front. You know what I'm saying? But that's not going to be the staple of my diet. Absolutely. I'm gonna eat. If I don't eat what I grow... I'm just running my mouth. Absolutely. And I'm trying to keep it young, vital, virile, strong. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm trying, you know, I want to stay looking young. And I do look young, though. You do look young. I don't know how. You you look good, though. You look good. You look good. I I was trying to coach that out. (laughs) I I was going to (laughs) front. All right, guys. We're going to take a really quick break. Um, Sorry for those who are just tuning in to the Edible Activist podcast. Um, I'm Melissa, and I'm sitting here chatting with Kevin Alsep of Feeding 5000. And we're going to be right back. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome back. These conversations have been like really dope. Um, Kevin, you're hilarious. You're funny. (laughs) You're a truth teller. You know, so much wisdom. He gave me so much wisdom even before we started. You know, I was just talking about this whole journey in podcasting, which is new to me. Um, so bear with me, everyone. This You're doing is an amazing thank job. You. I didn't think nothing less. <laughs> thank you so um, much. I think everything you put your hands to will turn to gold. We'll I, I received that. You thank know. you so much. I really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I can sit here all day and just rap with you, but we're coming back to the garden. So we're going to okay. continue these conversations. Okay. So right. for those who want to join us at the garden, listen in the hotel, mm-hmm. come down. We're nice people. Say hello. Wonderful. You know, I'm wonderful people. Um, but before we wrap up, just a just a couple more things. What what is your what do you want your legacy to be? Oh man, <clears throat> honestly, I just want my grandchildren and my great grandchildren to stand on a piece of property and be able to look out and say, you know, this we we here because Granddaddy put in work. Wow, I love that. That's all I want. That's all I want. I don't I don't you know what people say whatever whatever. You Take know, us back to the land. It is what it is. I want my my that's my legacy. You know, I love my pop, but he didn't leave me anything, and he showed me what not to do. I refuse to leave this earth and my my children and my children's children not benefit from me being on this earth. I, I'm not going out like that. And that's just so important because especially, you know, it's sad reality that it is, you know, with most Not all. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for all, but especially for a lot of African-American families, we don't pass things down. Mm -hmm. We pass debt down. Mm -hmm. We pass things down. Foolishness. Foolishness. Mm -hmm. But we stop passing wisdom down. It don't even have to be something tangible. Hmm. We just stop passing wisdom down. That in itself. Absolutely. When I think of generational wealth, and Mm -hmm. I was actually when we were. Um, I was talking yesterday to someone, we were talking about generational wealth, mm-hmm. and we just go back to the land, you know, and we had it eons ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was snatched from us. Mm-hmm. Some days it's still being snatched from us, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I think that that's, that's very powerful. 
and I I want the same thing. Right. I want the same, simple. same, same thing. You know what I mean? That's it. Very simple. Yeah. In your words, mm-hmm. because I'm giving everyone an opportunity to define what an edible activist is for themselves. Mm-hmm. I have my definition. Like I said, the movement is for everybody. Mm-hmm. This platform, Food Talks DC, the Edible Activist Podcast, is for people of color and mm-hmm. our voices, because uh-huh. I want our voices to be represented, but the movement is for everyone. But in your words, I want to give you an opportunity to define what that means to you. What that means to me. There's well, no right or wrong. Well, one edible activist off the top of my head means Melissa. <laughs> I mean, your vision, um, your spirit, your energy, your sacrifice, your work. I just feel like I'm honored to be a part of your vision. As Thank a visionary, you. you always honor it when somebody wants to be part of your vision. You know, you don't count it, count it lightly. But I look at um, people that are just really putting in work. You know what I mean? Putting in work to change yes. the dynamics. You know what I mean? To, change, to, to, to shift the paradigm to empower people, you know, on block by block, individual by individual, people that are not just growing food, but saying, hey, you grow this, this helps you. So I look at the healers, you know, the chefs, the growers, the admin, anybody that has anything to do with empowering the people through food, through food. Um, So, but when I see edible activists, I think of you. I really thank do. you, really thank do. you. <laughs> no, that was that, that was that was cool. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. So, Kevin, it was an honor. My pleasure. This has been fun. My pleasure. I appreciate your words. I appreciate you. Thank you. The work that you're doing, um, the programs that you've implemented, everything else that you're going to continue to do. Thank you. I hope to get my pickles. And my sunflower it's seeds. Always going on. The, you oh, know, I'm not letting the pickles go. I could tell. So we stroll up one day, guys, day. and it was an empty jar of pickles, right? <laughs> and so Lita and I are like, "What? What was in there?" He made us smell the juice. You can smell the pickle juice. What? <laughs> Teas? Uh, are you serious? Hey, but they left. <laughs> they left with a, a bunch you of did. groceries. Oh my right? gosh, like, and, guys! And we was zebra, like, tomatoes, every, yeah, greens. They, I made the biggest salad Did me and Lita you? were like texting each other photos and yeah. like what are you making Lee this is what I got oh uh, and a, like a hyper mm-hmm. local bowl of just freshness straight from mm-hmm. the garden and that's what Capital 5000 is all about hello that's what it's about I love it that's, I love it. that's it I love all that it. other stuff don't matter don't matter the fact that y'all was able to take break bread and have abundance to the point hey let's you know and share it and, sh- and that's and that's, share it. It was a conversation. That's, that's it. Okay, so we're going to do a quick question and answer. Okay. Just real quick. Real quick. So, um, got your words. thinking thinking cap on. I'm try. It's easy. There's no right or wrong. Before we were, this, this is the way we're going to wrap it up. Okay. okay. All right. um, so, what is your favorite leafy green? Nasturtium. Oh, yes, we had that. <laughs> Nasturtium. I kept messing up the name, uh-huh. and it just left this very sweet taste on my mouth when mm-hmm. I ha- I want some more. Do you have some more of that? Plenty. I, have I plenty. love that. You gotta come get in- it, though. I know. Thank you yeah. for introducing plenty. Plenty. me to that. Okay, um, an edible activist you look up to? Yourself mm-hmm. and Jennifer Lumpkin. Yes. Jennifer Lumpkin. Yeah, she I puts gotta in get work. Jennifer in here. She puts. I in miss work. her. Mm-hmm. I miss her, but she's she's doing all great things she out is. in she is. Ohio. Mm-hmm. Sweet, spicy, sour, or salty? Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet tooth. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. no, I, I don't, I can't do spicy. Okay. I don't need to do salty. <laughs> and sour is just not. My, yeah, so if I had to pick one, it'd be sweet. Okay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Favorite fruit? Favorite fruit. That's a good question. Um, what is my favorite fruit? Hmm. I guess... I would say an orange, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Little citrus in your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pineapple. Oh, I love pineapple. Good for the gut, too. Yeah. It's really good for the gut. Yeah. Okay. What's one way that someone can channel their inner edible activism in the black and brown food space? Growing your own food. Something and inviting a neighbor. Okay. To me, that they, they, they goes hand in hand. 
because you're going to produce more than you can consume yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's either going to become waste or you have to give it away. That's so true. That's that's what it's about. That's so true. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We're here live on Full Service Radio every Wednesday at 11 a.m. You can catch... Um, I'm sorry, you can access each episode after it airs at fullserviceradio.org. Be sure to follow me at Food Talks DC on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, follow um, All Sub Growers. Well, Feeding 5,000. Feeding 5,000. Uh-huh. I say I think outside growers on Instagram. Yes. Um, I think feeding five thousand is too. We have feeding five thousand <laughs> has Facebook, www.feeding5000.org. We have social media platforms. I'm horrible at it. If anybody <laughs> wants to come and have some ideas and want to put in some work, I'm open. Send me an email, Kevin at feeding five thousand inc dot org. That's Kevin at feeding five thousand. That's the number five zero 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 inc.org hit me up um, i'm looking for a social media person hey we we yes. put in work I, I can get you some say work it. you just gotta say it come with some innovation uh-oh uh-oh i love it, I love it. Uh-oh. uh-oh do we have any um uh-oh. takers over they, here leader to raise their hand <laughs> y'all better hurry up and send that email you better be hitting or the buttons D- down. you can send me a dm if you have any questions yeah, yeah. but um are you an edible activist? And so come join me on the show. I would love to feature you. Send me a DM on Instagram or you can email me, Melissa at GoodSoulEvents.com. Thanks everyone for Yay, tuning in Melissa, and have a wonderful Yay, day. Melissa. <laughs> Be easy. Peace, folks. Thanks for listening to this program on Full Service Radio. Broadcasting and recording from the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio programming can be accessed live and archived on fullserviceradio.org. Our talk programming is available on most podcast apps like iTunes and Stitcher, and our DJ sets are available on mixcloud.com slash fullserviceradio. Full Service Radio features over 30 weekly shows and over 50 local hosts covering every topic imaginable. If you want to be a guest or get involved, email us at info at fullserviceradio.org. Follow us on Twitter at Full Service RDO, on Instagram and Facebook at Full Service Radio. Thanks for listening. <laughs>